This video is going to show you how to do a two sample t-test for means in Excel when you don't have the data sets. So let's say all I've been given is a set of information like this here where I have a sample size, sample mean, and sample standard deviation for two um, samples. Now our claim here is the the means of population A and B are the same, which gives me these two hypothesis statements over here where the null hypothesis is the claim. So that means this is going to be a two-tailed test from looking at the uh, alternative hypothesis. And I have to use a t-distribution because all I was given was sample standard deviations. Oop, not t-tailed, t-distribution. Now I've got some formulas over here that I'm going to have to work with in order to do this. I need to calculate the t-statistic so that I can find the p-values, the area to the left and to the right of that t-statistic that I get. So there's a lot of pieces that I need to put together here. First one I'm going to start with is this s squared 1 and 2. Those are the variances and I get those simply by squaring the standard deviations. So I'm going to take this first one, square it, just get one again here. And now I have the variance for each one, and they are different, which is why these are the formulas that I'm using. Now, I also need the degrees of freedom. It's going to be uh, asked for when I go to calculate those p-values. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate that now, too. And so that is the sum of the n minus 2. So there's the degrees of freedom. And then this is a pretty complicated formula, so I'm going to break it up, um, do the numerator and then the denominator separately, um, which you can break it up even more if you want. So I'm going to start with the numerator. So up top here, I'm going to subtract the two sample means. And then for the denominator, well, I start with the square root there. And then I need to take the first variance, divide it. Sorry, that was my phone ringing. I just took a time out and I am back to finish uh, this problem. So we were calculating the denominator. So I took the variance of the first sample and divide it by the sample size. And then I'm going to add to that the variance of the second one divided by its sample size, close off those parentheses, and there is the denominator. Okay, so our test statistic is just dividing those two. So equals the numerator divided by the denominator. And there is my t-score. So if I'm imagining this on the normal curve, I'm looking for um, areas to the left and right of this, depending on what kind of test I'm doing. So this one's a two tail, so I'm going to end up with the last one is going to be my answer, but I'm going to find all of them just so I could do any problem with this. So with the right tail, remember I'm using a t distribution, so I start with t, and the rt is the right one, and the x value it wants is the t statistic that I just worked so hard to get, and then there's that degrees of freedom I needed. So there is my p-value if I was doing a right-tailed test. If I was going to do a left-tailed test, well, I can just pick this one here. And same thing, pull that test statistic and the degrees of freedom. And this one wants to know if it's cumulative or not. And yeah, we always want cumulative because that's the, all the area to the left of the, the t statistic. And there is my p-value for a left-tailed test. Now, if I'm doing a two-tailed test, I'd want to take the smaller tail of those first two and double it. So I'm going to do two times, and then the min of both of these, and whichever one's the smaller one is the tail that I would want. And then I'd have to multiply it by two to get the other tail on the other side. And so there is my value for this particular problem, since I am doing a two-tailed test. And if I compare that to the level of significance I was given, well, this is definitely bigger than uh, that level of, st of significance. And so that means that I'm going to fail to reject the null hypothesis 
And because our claim was the null hypothesis, that means that there is not enough evidence to reject the claim.